Hey there, I'm Jensen. Today is Tuesday, August 24th, and I have all the stories you need to know to get in the loop. First, we're heading back to Tokyo. Today, the Tokyo Paralympics finally began after it was delayed a year because of COVID. Tokyo's National Stadium is hosting the opening ceremony where more than 4,000 athletes from across 160 countries and territories are expected to participate. Last week, the Paralympic Heritage Flame was lit during a special ceremony in a village near London, which is where the Paralympic Games are believed to have started. The opening ceremony started at 7 p.m. tonight. And today, sadly, Rolling Stones drummer Charlie Watts has died. His publicist says he passed away peacefully in a London hospital this morning. Watts was with the Rolling Stones for 60 years, and not too long ago, he would announced he wouldn't tour with the band in 2021 because of a health issue. He was 80 years old. And New York State has a new governor. Kathy Hochul became the 57th governor of the state at 12.01 this morning. Now she takes over for Andrew Cuomo, who resigned after being accused of sexual harassment. I want people to believe in their governor again. It's important to me that people have faith. Our strength comes from the faith and the confidence of the people who put us in these offices. And I take that very seriously. Hochul is making history as the first woman to lead the Empire State and is now one of nine women currently serving as a governor. And that ties a previous record for the number of female governors. And the clock is ticking at the Kabul International Airport where evacuations are in high gear. The U.S. only has one week to get this done. The Taliban says if the evacuations extend beyond August 31st, a date set up by President Biden, there will be consequences. It is a, a violation, violation of the commitment that uh, President Biden uh, has made. So the race is on. Deadline really ramps up the pressure on an already chaotic evacuation as new reports of rights abuses fueled concern about the fate of thousands of people still trying to flee the country. And there are so many people around the airport that it's been slowing down the evacuation process. But today, the U.S. military says the pace has picked up. In the last 24 hours, 21,600 people left Afghanistan on U.S. aircrafts. We are still driving towards the end of the month. That's where we are now. And if and when there's any change to that, we'll certainly you know, make it clear to the American people. Biden held a virtual meeting with G7 allies. Britain and France are among those pushing for more time to finish evacuating their citizens. We have to plan on the 31st of August being the last moment. Every day we get after that would be a big bonus. And as the crisis in Afghanistan continues, the company Airbnb has pledged to house 20,000 Afghan refugees for free. The CEO of the company, Brian Chesky, announced this today. He says this is starting off now and the company, along with people who donated to the Airbnb.org refugee funds, will pay for their stays. On Twitter, Chesky called the displacement and resettlement of refugees one of the biggest humanitarian crises of our time. He also called for other business leaders to do the same. But that is all I have for you today. If you liked this video, hit that like button, and of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Jensen, and now you're in the loop.